And now it's time for another true supernatural story with King Noah. What's up, family? Just bearing witness to the goodness and the grace of God. Today, I get to tell you about God's healing power. How God used me to show his power and heal my body almost instantaneously from a traumatic injury. Here we go. So, uh, just took a load to Miami. We're calling this the Miami, the Georgia, Florida route. Georgia, Florida route. So I just took a load to Miami and uh, everything went all right. It was a nice little low, Colorado to Miami. And I'm on my way back to Atlanta, chill for a couple of days. So I'm about 30 minutes from the Georgia line in North Florida. And all of a sudden, I, uh, I can't breathe. I can't, I can't catch my breath. My chest hurt. I can't breathe. I'm driving. I got my SUV with a U-Haul trail on the back. I can't breathe. All I know is don't panic. It's, all I can do is like this. I'm like, oh my God. I think I'm having a heart attack. So, set the cruise control. I'm still riding on the road, getting a slow lane. I think I'm having a heart attack. I Google symptoms of a heart attack. It says uh, chest pain, uh, shortness of breath. Now, I can't even take a breath. I'm like, yo, I got to get off the highway before I pass out or something. So, I get off the highway, pull into the gas station. I, I Google hospital. Hospital is 0.3 miles away. I'm like... Is it behind the gas station? I literally pulled out the gas station, made a right, made a right. I was in the parking lot of the hospital. Glory to God. So, I got this truck and this trailer. I'm like, well, I'm a park. I can't breathe. I can't walk. I see the hospital bus. So, I go and I park next to the hospital bus. So, I, I, I can't hardly breathe. I just barely taking little baby steps. And I'm walking to the emergency room and I... I walk up to the lady, I'm like, yo, I think I'm having a heart attack, I can't breathe. She like, have a seat, somebody be with you. I'm like, have a seat. Maybe she didn't hear me. I think I'm having a heart attack, I can't breathe. She says, sir, I said, security! Get security guard out here before I fuck some shit up. I mean, excuse my language. Get security out here. Security guard come, I said, listen, I'm having a heart attack. This lady talking about, go sit down. I need help now, bro. I can't breathe. He said, all right, all right, I'm going to help you out. He went and got me a wheelchair. Security guard took me in the back. They was like, all right, we got to give you an x-ray. So I'm still sitting there. <laughs> they give me an x-ray. They say, uh, good news. I said, what? They say, you're not having a heart attack. I said, oh, that's cool. They said, but one of your lungs collapsed. I said, what, 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 do you, what do you mean one of my lungs collapsed? Yeah, one of your lungs collapsed. So we're going to have to intubate you. I'm like, I don't know what that is, but okay. So they get me out of x-ray, changed out, get me on the gurney in the back now. And so I'm talking to the doctor. He's like, yeah, uh, I'm going to have to intubate you. I'm like, what that mean? He said, I'm going to stick a little tube in your lungs. So I said, okay. He said, now I'm going to go ahead and get a little topical to numb, but you're going to feel some pressure. I said, okay. So he said, all right. He whispered on the phone. It's just me and the doctor in there. All of a sudden, six people walk in. I'm like, what's all these people for? Oh, they just going to help us out. I'm like, all right. So he gave me a couple of shots right here. Boom, boom, boom. Then I'm like, all right, what's going on? Two people hold my feet. One person holds my knees. Another person holds this arm, this arm like this. 
She holding it above my head. Another person hold this arm down. So they got me, six people holding me down. And this is where he coming in at. So I'm sitting there, he's like, all right, you're going to feel a little pressure now. I'm like, all right. He stuck a tube this big through my ribs. He said, boop. I said, ah! <laughs> I thought I felt pain before. I broke both my legs, both my ankles. I broke my pelvis, my shoulder, my jaw, my wrist. I thought I felt pain before. When he pierced my sight, huh, huh, huh. Bruh, all I could say is, God, why? Why do I have to feel this much pain? And God said, that's what happened to me. It pierced my side. I said, but I ain't you, man. Why I gotta go through everything you had to go through? He said, because I need you to. I said, well, listen. And it pierced my, my side. I tried to give up the ghost. I'm still here. Lord, please, can this be the last time I'm in enormous unbelievable pain please lord please he said yeah this is gonna be the last time i said all right whatever i laid down tried to go to sleep and i'm like oh excuse me nurse we got a problem she said what i said whatever he put in this side i can feel it on this side so i think it's ain't too far because if i try to breathe first he put it in i could breathe now when I breathe, it feel like a knife sticking me in my chest. She was like, oh, well, you're just going to have to chill till tomorrow. Chill till tomorrow. No, ma'am. It feels like there's a knife sticking in my chest right now. She said, well, the doctor's gone. I said, ma'am, I, I came here, I couldn't breathe. You did something I could breathe. Now I can't breathe again. I need help. Okay, somebody get with you. Hours go by. I'm calling my ex-wife now. I'm like, yo, they trying to kill me. Please call up here. This thing's stuck and it's going through to the other side. Anyway, I bug her all night. She like, Lord have mercy. We ain't together no more. Anyway, the morning comes. I can't move because it feel like the tube is sticking me on the other side. So physical therapy come in. She say, Mr. McDuffie, you got to get up and walk. I said, ma'am, get up and walk. I can't even breathe. This thing sticking me on the other side. She said, well, the doctor be here later. I'm like, Psh. she said, well, you got to get up or you're going to catch pneumonia. I said, well, I get up. I ain't walking nowhere. You had to help me up. So she helped me up. I said, I ain't walking. I ain't doing it. She said, you got to do something. I said, all right, I, help me walk around. I sit in that chair. So she helped me up. I walked around. I sat in the chair. I said, that's it. Leave me alone. I ain't doing nothing else. So she left. I sat in the chair and watched TV. I felt a little bit better. So I ain't used bathroom since yesterday. So now I'm like, I think I can go to the bathroom and use it. So I stood up. The tube fell out of my chest. I said, oh, dang. So... I walked to the door of my room and said, uh, excuse me, nurse. They said, ah, cold blue. You're not supposed to be up. Cold blue, cold blue. Uh, they run. They're like, get in the bed. Get in the bed. You ain't supposed to be up. I said, I don't know what y'all talking about. I feel better now. The tube out of me. I'm good. They said, no, you are not good. Get in the bed. I was like, whatever. I'm good. They like, no, they made me sit on the bed. At least sit down. As soon as I sat down, I start throwing up. Blah, 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 blah. They said, see? You're not good. I'm like, okay, maybe I should lay down. So they said, oh, my God, the doctor's going to have to put the tube back in. I said, oh, my God, the devil is a lie. You ain't putting that tube back in me. <laughs> you only put it in me the first time I didn't know what you was doing. Now that I know what you was doing, you ain't putting that tube back in me. She said, uh, it's not up to you, Miss McDuff. It's up to the doctor. I said, bull crap. Ain't nobody putting that tube back in me. I don't care what nobody say. She said, well, we're going to see what the doctor say. I said, you can see what whoever you want to see say. You ain't putting that tube back in me. So she called the doctor. 
The doctor told her, take me to get an x-ray. Give me an x-ray, and then call them back. So they took me the x-ray, they called the doctor. The doctor said, x-ray them at five in the morning, I'll be there at seven, and then if I had to put the tube back in, I'll put the tube back in. They said, we gonna x-ray you in the morning, and if you have to put it, I said, oh man, going out of my face. They ain't putting that tube back in me, whatever. Five in the morning came. They uh took me an x-ray, came back. The uh, nurse came back, she said, Mr. McDuffie, um, we talked to the doctor and apparently um, we don't have to put the tube back in. I said, what I tell you? She said, um, somehow the hole in your chest healed overnight. She said, I'm going to say that again. The half inch hole in your chest healed between 8 o'clock last night and 5 o'clock this morning. I said, my God is a healing God. She said, this is, this is, un, this is not, this is a miracle. This has never happened. I've been working here 27 years. Ain't nobody came here and had in, in, in the baby and they just healed overnight. She said, who are you, young man? I said, a child of God. She left. She came back with the rest of the nurses. They said, Mr. McDuffie, you don't understand. Normally when people get intubated, they are here for two weeks minimum. They lung got to heal, then the hole got to close before they can go home. You've been here overnight and the hole is closed. This is a miracle. God is real. They had church in my room. They had church in my room. They said, God healed my body. I said, yes, he did. God is amazing. So. Make a long story short, I, the third day, and the second day came, they didn't know what to say. The third day, they said, I guess we're going to have to let you go home. And no, in the history of this hospital, ain't nobody been home in less than 14 days. You've been here three days, you go home tomorrow, and you had your lung intubated. Look it up. I said, what happened to me? She said, it's called spontaneous pneumothorax. For no reason, just for nothing. Just being tall and skinny, your lung will collapse. You ain't do nothing. You ain't sick. I said, what the? Anyway, overnight, healed a half inch hole in my side. God is amazing. Believe in the family. Talk to them. Get to know them. In your time of distress, in your time of disaster, call upon him. He will show up and show out. I'm a living witness. Look, for six months, there was a string hand that hanging out my chest. I used to call myself the walking candle. And I used to show everybody. Now I ain't got nothing but a little scar. I'm going to show you a picture, though. This is where my side got pierced. Half inch hole healed overnight. God is amazing. I love y'all. I'm our family.